A reading from Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, from the message. One day he was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Master, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said, when you pray, say, Father, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. This is the word of the God, of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Raising the dead, walking on water, casting out demons, turning water to wine. What do you think if you were to name the most incredible thing Jesus ever did? What would you come up with? What do you, what do you list? Anybody? Water, you like the water to wine one. Yeah. I won't read into that. Walking on water. It's pretty powerful. Raising Lazarus from the dead. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, his own resurrection. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Imagine if you could have been present to witness those miracles. The disciples were. And when they're working with Jesus, when they're watching Jesus, when they're experiencing uh, these signs and wonders, it, it strikes me as interesting that they don't ask hey, Jesus, could you show us how to do that? Show us how to walk on water. Show us how to turn water to wine. Show us how to multiply a few pieces of bread and feed a multitude. What they ask is what Tiffany read for us from the message in Luke today. Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. They could have asked anything, and they asked, to learn how to pray. Over the next several weeks, I want us to wrestle with that question. I want us to make that question our own. Of all the spiritual practices, prayer, I would uh, contend, is the most foundational, the most formational. It's also the one that I think that we spend the less time really thinking about because it is so ubiquitous that we don't even really uh, consider what is it, and what could it be, and, and are we doing it well? And, or, or maybe on the other, other side, maybe you are asking those questions. And so, if that's the case, then I, I want you to buckle up, strap in. Over the next few weeks, we're going we're gonna to dig into prayer. Again, it's, it's going to be my suggestion to us, if we can get prayer figured out, if we allow prayer to be the, the center of our life together, then God will do and can do uh, so much in and through us. Are you with me, friends? So far, so good? So teach us to pray. That's what we're going to be. We're, we're looking for some secret sauce, and, and we're going to start with this teaching us to pray. I'm going to be using uh, several resources. This is the one I want to lift up today, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. This is uh, from Pete Gregg. He's part of the 24-7 prayer movement. I think he's from New Zealand. I like the way he, uh, he does uh, some really good work around spiritual disciplines, specifically prayer. How to Pray, A Guide for Normal People. Um, in other words, let me just say this at the beginning, this is not going to be a deeply theological study of prayer. It's going to be, let's, how do we get practical in our day-to-day -day lives? Ordinary folks. Isn't that us? Ordinary folks? How do we pray? What is that going to look like? So, um, I've, got, I've got a copy of that if anybody wants to borrow it. Here's, here's what Pete says right on the page one. Every pilgrim gets a stone in their shoes eventually. Everybody on the journey, right? Everybody walk, walking uh, through this life of faith. Every pilgrim gets a stone in their shoes eventually. You wake up one morning thinking, is this really all there is to knowing the creator of 100 billion galaxies? We sang, God of wonders, 
But every once in a while, do you stop and think, is this really all there is? Our day-to-day mundane lives? You read the book of Acts, that's uh, right after our Gospels, and you ask, why isn't it like that anymore? Your world falls apart, and you desperately need a miracle. You stare up at the stars and feel things are bigger than our religious language. He goes on, he says, you say to yourself, if this thing is true, there's got to be more power, more mystery, more actual personal experience. And so finally, You turn to God, half wondering whether you're any more than half serious, and say, Lord, teach me to pray. And God replies, I thought you'd never ask. So we're going to ask the question, teach us to pray. Will you you help us pray, God? But before we dive into the how, before we wrestle with Jesus' response, Again, we we heard how he responds in Luke's gospel. Before we wrestle with that, I want to invite invite us to to consider something about God and therefore Jesus when, when, when they answer this question. Again, Greg reminds us, and I think it's a good reminder, that God is not offended when we choose to spend time pursuing other interests instead of spending time in prayer. God is not frustrated with our short attention spans when we get finally get around to praying. Do you, do you start to pray and then, you, then, then the next thing you know you're thinking about a grocery list? Do you ever do that? You want to pray, you're intent, you want to sit down and have some God time, and the next thing you know you're thinking about the birds chirping or the laundry that needs to get done or life intrudes. Or am I the only one that has that? God is not frustrated by our short attention spans. God doesn't play hard to get or try to make us earn God's attention when we finally do decide to spend some time with God. The truth is, God loves us. And when we turn toward God, God does not try to beat us up and say, what took you so long? Right? God just welcomes us and encourages us, meets us right where we're at, Greg says it this way, God wants to spend time with us even more than we want to spend time with God. That's good news. But whatever amount of attention we can muster up, God is willing to receive that, and God will work with that. And since prayer is ultimately relational, this is, a, this is a good. This is good for us. So before we answer questions about how to pray, I want to, I want to frame that I think the how is less important than the who. Prayer is, is really about us spending time with God. There's not one right way to pray. There's not some magic words. Uh, they're, they're really, spoiler alert, there is no secret sauce. I hope you keep coming back next couple weeks. I kind of gave it all away right there, but It's less about the how and more about the who. It's more about the relationship that's formed in the context of prayer. We, we spend so much time trying to get the right words or trying to find the right place, and we're going to talk some about that. But friends, I want to emphasize all of that right here at the beginning to say it's not about getting, uh, mastering some perfect technique. Can you hear me on this? Yes? I'm just looking around to make sure you're following. We're going to spend some time talking about technique. We're going to spend some time talking about things that are tools that I think are helpful. But let us not forget the beginning of this is all about our relationship with God. It's all about spending time with God. That's what's critical. That's what's important, most important. So no real secret here. So when the disciples asked to be taught how to pray, again, just continuing that idea, Jesus doesn't ridicule them, doesn't get frustrated with them. He's ready to meet them where, they're, where they are, uh, right when they ask. And, and when they ask, he has an answer. And we call that answer the Lord's Prayer. It's a model prayer. It's, a, it's, it's, it's what we're going to dig into now to say, could, could this help us inform how we might pray just generally? We, we can pray the Lord's Prayer, yes. And as a matter of fact, I've got some handouts today. I didn't print one for everyone, but if you'd like to have a handout, it breaks out the Lord's Prayer along with some having trouble here, sorry. One of the things they, um, we don't learn in seminary 
Uh, whenever you um, take over for a pastor, you have different ears and how to adjust the uh, microphone for your ear. Angie must have had uh, little ears, maybe big ears. I'm not sure what ears she had, but our ears are definitely different. Angie, if you're watching, I'm not making fun of your ears. It's my ears that are a problem. I've got a handout, Lord's Prayer, broken out with additional scripture that you might use as a prayer guide. Um, so some tools. I'm gonna, uh, they're over here by the ducks if you want, want any of those. You can find the Lord's Prayer in Luke 11. You can also find a version of it in Matthew 6. Uh, so if you're taking notes, I would write those down, uh, Luke 11, Matthew 6. You can take a look at those later. And we're going to use that Lord's Prayer as a framework. Uh, Greg has, in the book, How to Pray, offers an acronym uh, to help guide us, P-R-A-Y. Pretty handy. How do you pray? You pray, P-R-A-Y. We're going to pause, that's the P. We're going to rejoice, R. A, we're going to ask, and Y is yield or, or saying yes to God, surrendering to God. But Praz didn't work as well, so he does Y for yield. That's how we do these things. He actually says he doesn't like acronyms, um, but this one works pretty well. Easy to remember, pray while you pray. So again, let us, let us repeat. The form is, is less important than the relationship, but there is some form we're going to use. Let's just keep it simple, though, as we start. And this is, a, again, some guides as we think, as we, we're going to get into each one of those letters. Here are the, here are the guides that, that Greg lifts up that I want us to, to hold on to throughout this entire series. We're going to come back to this. Keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it up. You got to keep it simple, he says, so that the most natural thing in the world doesn't become complicated, weird, and intense. Keep it simple. Simple is repeatable, right? It's something we can, we can do easily. Keep it real because when life hurts, you're going to be tempted to pretend that you're fine. And when you make a mess of things, you're going to be tempted to hide from God, which never really works, and end up hiding from yourself, which we do quite well. So keep it real. So simplicity, honesty is the second key. And then you've got to keep it up. Because life is tough, the battle is fierce, and God is not an algorithm. The journey of faith, this is all from Greg, the journey of faith demands certain bloody-mindedness of us all, not the least in the realm of prayer. Persistence. So imagine prayer, uh, thinking about the way we engage in prayer, almost like exercising a muscle. Right? The, the best exercises are the ones that are just simple, easy to do. You don't need a lot of equipment right? You don't need a lot of training, but you need to do it over and over again. It becomes a habit that way. It becomes something that we don't have to, have to really wrestle with the form of it. We can just get into it. Simplicity, honesty, perseverance. So here we go. Our first step is really not a step. It's to pause. Pausing draws us into slowing and centering. In Matthew uh, chapter 6, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount that then leads into uh, Jesus offering this prayer. Earlier, he says this, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, to your Father who sees what is done in secret. He will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need even before you ask. To start to pray, we just pause. We just center ourselves. And when we pray, we're not going to try to make a show of it. Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. So it starts with a centering. It starts with a focus. It starts with stopping right? I had an opportunity uh, many years ago to travel to England on a, a Wesley pilgrimage. We went to several sites that were important to early Methodism, and one of the places we went was John Wesley's, one of John Wesley's houses, and in his house, he, he literally has a prayer closet. And in the closet, there's a little kneeler. It didn't have a cushion on it. It was all made of wood, but he had kneeled on it so often, for so many years, you could see the, the dents, the indentations 
of him kneeling there. Who got to see him do that? God saw it, right? He, it was a secret thing. It was a hidden thing. He wasn't doing it for show, in other words. That doesn't mean that we can't pray out loud. There's a, there is a place for corporate pray, prayer, right? This communal prayer that we do. But most of our prayer is going to be just us and God. Start by pausing, finding the place where you can be focused on God. Become still. P. Gregg talks about, he's, uh, again, kind of this guy that's uh, really into spiritual disciplines, as I mentioned, and he talks about the Celtic Christians uh, finding a thin place, a place where the, the distance between uh, heaven and earth was thin, a thin place. Maybe that's a prayer closet. Maybe that's a favorite chair. Maybe that's a back patio. Maybe that's a nature trail by your house, right? The place is not as important as, as what it does for you, right? I'm not, so there's not a prescription for you need to go get a wooden kneeler, put it in your closet somewhere and go pray. That's not, that will work for John Wesley, might not work for you. A thin place. After you pause and as, as, you, as you begin to become present with God, become, you begin to recognize God in your midst, what does that even mean? That's going to look different for each one of us. You can move on to the, the next piece, which is rejoicing. So as you're praying, the first, the first piece is just to become present in that moment. And then, notice this, you begin by rejoicing. The, the A is asking, but most of, most of us start with asking. Yes? I remember when I was a, a wee lad, living at my mom and dad's house. I was probably eight years old, I don't know, and there was some televangelist on, on the television. I was not supervised much as a child growing up, and so I watched all kinds of things. Now, uh, televangelists get a, a bad rap generally, but this particular person, have no idea who they were, what, what they were doing, but this particular person has said something that even as an eight-year-old I resonated with, I could, and I remember to this day. The idea of asking God for prayer is not wrong, but, but don't start there, this evangelist was saying. Recognize all the good that God has done with you and for you. Start by rejoicing, in other words. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to pause, we're going to reflect, and rejoice. This is how you should pray, we read. God in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Philippians 4 goes on to say it this way, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it, rejoice, because rejoicing will lead us to this exclamation. It will lead us to the realization that God is our parent, our father, our mother, that God is holy, that God is good amazing and wonderful. Again, Drew's given us a hard time about singing camp songs here. Uh, God of Wonders, we, I don't know we really call that a contemporary song anymore, but the idea of that song is look, go, go outside and look at the grandeur of the creation, right? And it should point us back to the Creator, Think about all the, the, the goodness in the world. It's, it's harder to do some days than others. But if we start there, if we start by recognizing God's goodness, we, that, that will frame our prayer. That will change how we pray. Do you know these folks? I feel like I need to move a little bit. Do you know the folks that are, that are just always grumbly and complaining? Do you have those people in your life? That no matter how wonderful things are, there's, they always have a, you know, some way of, of finding the hard thing. Yeah? You know what I'm talking about? Here, here's what I've found to be true in life. If, if you look for stuff to complain about, you'll find it every time. If you're looking to be upset, offended, there's plenty of opportunities for both. Yes? On the other hand, if you look for opportunities to rejoice, if you look for the good in the world, you will find that as well. Yes? And this frames our prayers. This can frame our prayers if we start by recognizing God's goodness. Now, this is not toxic positivity, 
You've been hearing that phrase lately. This is not pretending that the world is not hard or difficult, right? But it's simply saying, God, beyond all the circumstances of life, you are, you are God, and you are amazing, and you are wonderful, and look what you've created. Pause leads us to rejoice. The next dance step, if you think about this as a dance, uh, and I like that kind of idea, that picture that we might dance with God, right? If, if prayer is like a dance and we're, we're moving back and forth, because here's, here's what prayer is often, for me, this is what we get to asking, uh, this is what we often, I think, think about prayer. This is the petition, right? This is, this is God give me, God I want, God I need. But if we think about it as a dance, then, then sometimes we've got to We've got to move back, right? We've got to, we respond to our partner when we dance, yeah? Unless it's a mosh pit, and then that's something totally different, and that's not what we're talking about today. I'm talking more about like a, I don't know, slow dance, right? Should have had my wife up here. We could have done a little dancing with you. Asking, petition, intercession. This also leads us, though, to think about unanswered prayer. And if we start with rejoicing, then I think we frame unanswered prayer differently. We still see God as good. We still know that God is in control. God is holy. And so when we don't hear the answer immediately, we can be patient and persevere. When we don't hear the answer immediately, we don't think God's absent or God has given up on us because we've started with framing our experience of God differently. Here, uh, when we ask, so we're going to pause, we're going to rejoice, and we're going to ask, we want God to do something. We want God to act. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray this way, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. That's what we're praying. We're asking God to provide for us, to take care of us. John 14, verse 14 says this, you can ask anything in my name, and I'm going to do it. So we're invited to ask. We are invited to have this moment of, of intercession, of, of please help us. And when we pray in this way, however, we're praying for these heavenly possibilities to enter into the, the mundane. We're, we're praying for this great creator God to enter into everyday life, to bring your kingdom. That's a big idea. But don't get lost. It's, okay, it's also okay to say, can I have a pizza? Right? Right? Ask for what you want and what you need. That's okay. And when we don't rehear uh, the answer, as I've already said, give up. We can keep on praying. We, we might even add then uh, asking God to give us patience or wisdom or perseverance. Those could be the kinds of things we ask. Again, we tend to ask for uh, material things or, or health or you know, for, for God to do something in our lives, something that we want, but we could just ask, God, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Which leads us to the next piece, because if we're going to pray that, then we're going to have to admit that maybe God's going to do some things that we don't ask for, right? We're going to yield then to God's will. We're going to let God be God. This for me, friends, can I just be honest with you as a pastor? Uh, you'd think I'd be better at this. I'm not, I'm not better at this. I'm, I, I like to think of myself as, as a pretty smart guy, and, I, and I, know, um, I know things about the world, right? I know what's good and what's bad. The, the problem with, with that is I'm not God, though. <laughs> I don't know everything God knows. And, and every once in a while, I just got to stop and remember that. You, again, you'd think I would know that by now. I'm old enough to know that by now. But in the midst of a day-to-day -day life, um, I find myself constantly thinking, I want this, I need that, I do it this way. Instead of saying, God, let me just surrender to you. You know what I need. You know, even before I asked, what's best for me. So let me just pose that question to you. Do you believe that God has your best interests in mind? Do you believe that God does know more than you know? Then, then will you start living like that? That's the question. Will you start praying like that? I think living it starts by praying it. So we're going to yield to God. We're going to say yes to God. So we pray, forgive our debts 
as we forgive those who, 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 who we've wronged. Lead us not into temptation, but, 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 but save us from evil. Save us from ourselves. We're just asking God to, to interact with us in a way that is best for us, even, even if we've got um, a pretty good idea of what we think that should look like. Recap. Keep it simple. Keep it real. Keep it up. Not about the form. Uh, so much as is, is it about a posture of our heart. Part of what makes the Lord's Prayer so powerful is that it's easy to memorize. Uh, many of you, uh, when I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we were going to start using the Lord's Prayer, the kind of more traditional King James Version, uh, there was almost like cartwheels. There were some pom-poms that came out. There was a, a real sigh of relief because we had uh, introduced the Lord's Prayer, I think, maybe in the NRSV. Yeah? And the NRSV is not the Our Father who art in heaven, right? It's more like this message thing we just did. And, and, it's, and it, it falls on our ears in a weird way, and we're not sure we like that. We've learned the Lord's Prayer a certain way, and it's easy to memorize that way. But friends, again, don't get caught up in the words. It's, it's easy to memorize just because we've done it so many times. We teach it to our kids. We, we, you know, it's, it's written all over the place. That's what's powerful about it. It's easy, it's simple, we can recite it. It's also honest about our needs and our struggles. It gives voice to our hopes and draws us to the one who can fulfill those hopes. So I'm going to invite us, if, if you aren't already, to pray the Lord's Prayer daily. Can, just for the next few weeks, if this is not part of your, of your regular practice, you might not do anything else through this whole prayer series, but would you commit to this? Every day, at least once a day, pray the Lord's Prayer. You could do it when you first wake up in the morning. You could do it right before you go to bed. You could do it before a meal. You could you pick the time that makes sense for you. Some people do something like every, uh, every day at the same time you're going to pray. 717, right? In the morning or in the evening, you're going to say a prayer. This could be your prayer, right? Set an alarm if that helps, yeah? Can you, can you commit to the Lord's Prayer? That's what I'm asking. A couple folks nodding their heads. Here's what I, friends, can you hear me on this? Here's what happens when people start praying. We start hearing God. God starts moving. God starts doing stuff. Can you hear me? If you want to see something uh, different in your life, if you want to see something different in the world, I, I believe it starts with us praying. Let's just pray the Lord's Prayer. It's simple. It's easy. We know it already. Okay? We're going we're to commit to that over these next several weeks so that you can get an easy win. Let's pray it now. What do you think? Pray with me. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.